Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Sanabes Kalaiva. Uh, I have survived the zombie epidemic. Just a couple scratches. Uh, you know, I didn't realize I was narcissistic, but you know, I guess uh, even the best of us, you know, have some problems. In any event, so in, as I came out of my deep sleep, uh, as I was terrified, you know, I thought this uh, would affect everyone, uh, except me, of course. I uh, went underground and uh, I, I rushed off, you know, just poof, you know, and uh, a special bunker. Um, anyway, <laughs> when I woke up uh, out of the freeze, which I, I put on two week timer just to be safe, you know, and um, I realized that this uh, happens in just a matter of like three or four days and then this Sally compost has got all this like composted zombie now and that we have this uh, well we have this world of uh, free of the narcissism <clears throat> and um, my son uh, being uh, anxious and creative as he is he made a special little movie, so I want to take my, you know, tip my hat uh, to my son Ferdinand uh, that he, you know, and pioneered this by himself at the tender age of uh, nine. So I want to share some of his eloquent drawings and uh, and his storytelling ability as he goes through this uh, little expose, which I think captures the spirit of what happened to this zombie. Thing. It took out 10% of the population, my friends. Uh, of course, I don't miss them that much because they were narcissistic. <laughs> okay, so I please enjoy the movie. 250,000 years ago, Dr. Zug of the planet k programmed in human DNA a recessive gene that would activate a zombie virus causing narcissistic cells become narcissists. He set up a monitor on the moon to detect levels of narcissism on the earth. Well, that day came. The first victim, John White of South Carolina, was beginning to shave, admiring himself. But when the razor touched his face, chunks of his flesh came off. Horrified, John didn't know what to do. His zombie cells had already become narcissists and were beginning to rot. He grabbed his wife's lipstick in a desperate attempt to cover up his green lips, stumbling out of the house into the neighborhood. Meanwhile, across the nation, thousands of zombies were filling the streets, rushing into department stores, grabbing clothes, and cosmetics to cover up their rotting flesh and horrified faces. Some chose suicide. It was easier. They were still cognizant of the fact that they were human, kind of. Some of them jumping off of their penthouse apartments. Anything but to die looking like a zombie. Soon, the National Guard was called in taking out these poor guys. They just wanted to look good. It wasn't really their fault. Meanwhile, down in Florida, a bar was celebrating Trump's victory, was soon heavily disappointed when their candidate and president-elect turned into a pile of zombie compost. Fortunately, Miss Sally Compost scientist and genetic engineer was nearby. She grabbed a sample and brought it back to her special laboratory. And she found out the compost had an adaptogen that made plants adapt to all kinds of different climate conditions. She contacted her dad. He believed every word she said and had a ceasefire called immediately to prevent the zombies from being senselessly shot. Dad, they could be turned into compost. A ceasefire was called off on the zombies, and the nation was alerted not to kill the zombies. 
because they were going to be used for something much, much better. Sally, with her bullhorn, conducted thousands of helpers into placating the zombies, admonishing them with words of, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, to help speed along their decomposition. She even sang cheery Christmas songs just to kind of warm them up. Some zombies were easy. Others were tougher. In some cases, people had to hold up mirrors with pretty pictures to fool them. I think that they were really pretty still. There were centers set up to attract the zombies and inside affirmations. We love you. You're number one. You're the best. This turned them instantly into compost. This compost was taken worldwide. Sally orchestrated the whole thing. This was what she had been waiting for her whole life. And thanks to the GOP, America had an ample supply of zombie compost. Although this compost had a really, really bad smell and had to be airlifted out. The world woke up the next day to a world free of narcissism. The world now had a compost so ingenious we could live without pesticides, herbicides, and all kinds of toxic nitrate fertilizers to commemorate the people that gave their lives, the narcissists that turned into this compost. A monument was erected in Washington, a zombie hand reaching towards the sky. And every year on Zombie Day, people gather with a little bit of the compost and sprinkle it on the ground in memory of those who gave their lives.